Hi, welcome to my video on how to find the domain and range of radical functions. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do each one of these sort of graphically and algebraically to a certain extent. I have a lot of examples though, so I don't want to take too long. Uh, let's jump right into it and talk about the parent functions that we're dealing with here. Our main, <clears throat> our main function today will be the square root function where the, the index here is a 2. We're not going to talk too much about this one, and I'll show you why in a second, but the main square root of x function uh, starts at 0, 0, and if we plug in 4, we get 2. If we plug in 9, we get 3. So it's you know, out there somewhere, but it graphs like this. This is our parent function. And the domain of this is close bracket 0 to infinity. Now when we talk about domain again, what I want you to do is get into a habit of maybe putting your pencil down and, and asking yourself, alright, where does the graph touch, or where does the graph sort of start in terms of left and right? So you lay your pencil down vertically and you just kind of drag it in from the left. And you can see it starts right there at 0 and it goes on forever. Now in terms of the range, you would do the same thing except you would use a horizontal line and you want to sort of bring it in from the bottom. Where does the graph first touch your pencil? It starts touching the graph right there at zero and it goes on forever. So that is the same thing, closed from zero to infinity. Now we're, we close it because there is a dot there at zero zero. There's a function value there. The function is defined at zero. If if it weren't defined at zero, maybe if it were like an, an open dot or something, we would have to use our parenthesis instead of a bracket. For the cube root function, the parent is is a little bit easier actually. We're not going to look at any examples of this because all the domains are the same and all the ranges are the same regardless of what sort of transformations are done upon it but 0 0 is defined if I plug in 1 I get 1 if I plug in negative 1 the cube root of negative 1 is negative 1 so now we're going down into this quadrant if I plug in negative well let me put that back if I put in positive 8 the cube root of positive 8 is 2 so when x is 8, y is 2. Negative 8, negative 2. As you can see, this thing is going to graph something like this. It's going to go on forever. All right, where the domain is all reals and the range same deal, it's going to go down and up forever. And that's true of all cubics, cube root functions, I should say. So here we go. A lot of what we do today is going to be sort of based on this parent square root function. We're not going to really look at the cube root function because they're all the same. They're all that. So here we go. Let's take a look at number, I guess I called it number two. Here we go. So I'm going to try to find the domain and range of this function. So first things first, I might want to get into a habit of, you don't have to do this, but you might want to do it. Just drawing that parent function every time. Now as far as transformations on this, when the number is sort of on the outside, I remember we can rewrite this like this. Sometimes you'll see it like that. When the number's on the outside, that means that it's going to be shifted vertically, that number. So this one is shifted vertically. So it looks just like the parent, except up 4. So the domain is the same, and the range is shifted up 4. It starts at 4 and goes on forever. All right, so let's continue. Number 2. Number two, we've got our parent right there, 
and this transformation is on underneath our radical so that means it's going to be left and right if it's x minus 3 that means it's shifted right 3 so this one is right 3 and it preserves the same shape so that means that my domain is 3 to infinity and my range is 0 to infinity All right, and what we're really kind of looking at here is anytime we have a radical function that's on its own it's not in the denominator of a, of a fraction or anything what we really want to do algebraically is say okay let's take that radicand that thing underneath and say that it has to be either zero or a positive number and this is our domain all the x is bigger than or equal to three that's an algebraic way of finding your domain it's kind of nice number four again the parent let's draw it in here this one has a multiplier so this is a different sort of transformation. This is not a translation. This is more of a non-rigid transformation where it's going to turn the graph and sort of make it look sort of distorted. So let's, you know, let's test a few. Let's test a few of these things. If we put in 1, what do we get? If we put in 2, what do we get? 3, what do we get? And so on and so forth. Let's try these uh, five values. Uh, zero, zero, of course, will will maintain. But when we put in one, it's two times the square root of one. So now it's one comma one comma two. So you can see that it's already quite different than the other than the parent function. So next one is going to be two radical two. Not a really easy number. Three radical three. Excuse me, I did that wrong. 2 radical 3 is not a very easy number, but 2 radical 4 is. That's 2 times 2, which is 4. So when the graph equals, or when x equals 4, uh, the graph spits out 4. So it's up here. We put in 9, 2 radical 9, that's 2 times 3 is 6. So 9 comma 6. So you can see that when we change, 0, 0 is still in effect, when we change that A term to a positive number, our square root graph sort of just gets a little bit taller. Everything kind of distorts vertically. So the original question was domain and range. In this case, the domain hasn't changed and the range hasn't changed either. And even if that number in front were like a positive one-third or some sort of fraction, the domain and range would still be the same. It only changes when we have to, uh, when we have a negative number out in front, which we'll see in a second. Number five. Let's put our parent in. <clears throat> this one has a negative one out in front, so it's going to basically do this. So if we, you know, create some sort of t-chart here just to confirm, 0, 1, uh, let's do 4 and 9. When I plug in 0, I get negative square root of 0, which is 0, negative square root of 1, which is negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3. So that's where we're getting these points from, 1, negative 1, 4, negative 4, or excuse me, 4, negative 2, and 9, negative 3. So that's where that comes from. So you can see when the lead coefficient is negative, it just kind of reflects it down across the x-axis, which has a pretty significant change on the range. The domain is the same, but the range is going to be everything below the x-axis, including 0. And we write it in that order, right? The small numbers on the left. Number six, so now we have a negative one-half. All right, so we know that the parent goes through one, one, four, two. All right, it looks something like that. And this one is reflected down, and 
Uh, the translation has me going left three. So it's reflected down it's, and it's also translated left three. So one, two, three. And it's reflected down. And the one half means that it's a little bit closer to the x axis than the parent would be. So it's reflected down and it just kind of sticks a little bit closer to the x axis. And if you wanted to, you know, plug in some values there, you certainly can. Uh, maybe I'll plug in negative, you know, three. I'll plug in uh, zero, and maybe I'll plug in uh, one. So if I get negative three, <clears throat> when I plug in negative three into this thing, I get negative one half square root of negative three plus three, which is of course the negative one half times. Uh, zero, the square root of zero is just zero. But when I plug in zero here, I get negative one half square root of zero plus three. So it's negative one half times the square root of three. It's not a very easy number, but I chose this one because it is. When I plug in one for x, negative one half times the square root of four is negative one half times two, which is negative one. So one, negative one, is a point. So what I need to do is put one negative one on that graph and it's just gonna kinda hug the x-axis a little bit more than it normally would. It's shorter in other words. So the domain on this is from negative three to infinity and the range would be from negative infinity to zero. And you're noticing every time I put an infinity, I'm using a parenthesis, not a bracket. And these closed brackets are closed because these dots are valid. They're there. They're valid points. All right, let's transform the quad, the radical a little bit more. So now we're going to go left three, left six. We're going to go up three, and we're going to vertically compress the radical. So we're going to draw in our parent and our new one is left six up three and it's a little bit squished so the domain on this guy is everything to the right of that including negative six and the range is everything above three three to infinity Last one. So again, let's draw on our parent here. We've got that as our parent. This is going to go right four down six, and it's going to be stretched big time by a factor of five. So I'm going to go right four down six, and I'm going to stretch this thing vertically. So it's going to be like that. All right, and again, if you wanted to, you can plug in some values here and see what you get. You know, when we plug in four, what do we get? When we plug in, uh, you know, eight, what do we get? That's probably, maybe that's all I'll do. Uh, so four, we get five square root of four minus four minus six. So that's five times zero minus six. 5 times the square root of 8 minus 4 minus 6. That's 5 times the square root of 4 minus 6, which is 5 times 2 minus 6, which is 10 minus 6, which is 4. 8 comma 4. So when I graphed it, I wasn't even giving it enough credit for how tall it is. 8 comma 4 is up here. So this graph is really really tall but you know what it, the domain is everything including four to the right and the range is everything including negative six up so long story short it doesn't really matter like how big or small that number is if it's positive the thing is going up 
it's negative, the, the graph's going down. So, <clears throat> again, the, the algebra behind this whole thing is that, you know, any time you have something underneath a radical, it's allowed to be zero, and it's allowed to be positive, but in the real number system, it cannot be negative. So that's why this parent function right here is restricted. The domain is restricted and the range is restricted. No, nothing can be negative over here and nothing can be negative down here. That's why it resides only in quadrant number one. Uh, in the next video, I'm probably going to go through domain and range of rational functions where we have fractions. Uh, we'll also go into domain and range of maybe absolute value functions and uh, we'll go from there. But hope that helped and uh, thanks for watching.